Okay, Assalamualaikum and very good morning everyone. So we're going to be starting our CME um, now. My name is uh, Umar Khoi Muhammad. I'm an emergency physician in Hospital Sungai Bulu. So for today's uh, CME, I'm going to be talking about uh, lung ultrasound, um, easy, early, easy and life-saving. So first of all, um, I would like to disclose that I have no actual or potential conflict of interest relation, in relation to this presentation. So this will be my, uh, the outline of my presentation. So I'm going to be introducing um, lung ultrasound and how do we interpret lung ultrasound. Um, lung ultrasound assessment um, in acute dyspnea patients. What's the difference between chest x-ray, lung ultrasound, and uh, lung scaltation? Uh, lung ultrasound in detecting COVID-19 pneumonia or ABS. Um, the usage of um, the application of lung ultrasound in other hospital settings. And uh, lung ultrasound use in critically ill patients. Uh, for instance, in patients with pulmonary edema, ERDS, um, and detecting ERDS morphologies, uh, lung aeration assessment, deep titration, and monitoring during room positioning. So as an introduction, um, lung ultrasound, uh, the use of lung ultrasound and the use of ultrasonography has become uh, becoming popular in the medical field. It is actually considered as the third eye of uh, healthcare providers, especially in ED, ICU, and also CCU. So, um, lung, ultrasound, lung ultrasound also is part of uh, point of care ultrasound. It is very easy. Uh, it is easy, easily available at bedside, um, real time, and free of radiation in comparison to conventional imaging modalities of the lungs. So, how do we interpret lung, uh, lung ultrasound? So lung ultrasound is actually a study of artifacts produced by aerated lungs. So the interpretation are based on the aeration status of the lung, the parenchyme, and also the status of pleural content, whether uh, there's air or fluid in the pleural cavity. So rapid interpretations and appropriate interventions can be made at that site without delay, especially in Disney patients. So as we all know, now some is also being incorporated in um, EFAS, Neil uh, and protocol. So these are the regions um, where lung ultrasound are being performed, and the protocol is called uh, Ruby's protocol. So it consists of um, six segments in each uh, hemithorax. So, um, so when you combine both uh, hemithoraxes, and then you get a total of four sectors. And this is what, uh, these are the amount of sectors that will be um, interrogated um, when performing lung ultrasound. So this, um, um, what, uh, this is how we uh, quantify, um, this is how we quantify the, um, um, the, the pathologies of um, what you can see in lung ultrasound. So there are um, four points from 0 0.0 to 0 0.3, it all depends on the degree of um, aeration. So as you can see, 0 0.0 with to normal aeration. One point with a moderate loss of aeration. 0.2 means that there's um, evidence of severe loss of aeration. And 0.3 uh, means there's complete loss of aeration. And all three points will give you different um, images and uh, will give different interpretations. Here's an example of uh, clips that you will be able to see based on what uh, you saw in the previous um, slide. So the first uh, clip uh, that is showing right now is uh, 0, 0.0, meaning there's um, normal addition. When there's normal addition, you'll be able to see um, the evidence of plural line and A lines. So when you see evidence of plural line and A lines, so it means that uh, there's 
normal um, uh, there is normal emission. Secondly, um, at the bottom is the presence of B lines, isolated B lines, meaning that uh, there's a moderate loss of emission. So when this um, isolated um, B lines, when they converge, when they become coalesce, when they become coalescent, is what you can see in this clip. It means that there's, there's um, severe loss of emission, and this um, is quantified as um, score two. And the last clip, as you can see here, is um, is when there's complete loss of emission, meaning that um, the lung parenchyma is consolidated, and there's increased um, amount of fluids um, in the lungs, in the lung parenchyma. So this is um, being scored three. So besides um, interrogating the um, in the lung parenchyma, so we also will interrogate um, the pleura. Yeah. So based on this clip, as what you can see here, this is the pleura. You can see that the pleura is actually sliding the because pleura has two. So there's uh, two components in the pleura, which is the parietal and visceral pleura. So um, this is what we call um, sliding sign when there's or when there's um, no or when this when parietal pleura and visceral pleura slide uh, are sliding against each other, each other. So when they're sliding against each other then you're able to see that the pleura is actually moving. That's what you can see here. And this is a normal morphology for uh, pleura. In order for us to determine whether someone has um, air inside the pleural cavity is or when there's loss of sliding sign. So um, when there's loss of sliding sign, meaning that the pleura the parietal pleura and visceral pleura that they don't uh, they don't rub against against each other. So when you see that, it means that there's evidence of air within the pleural cavity. Sorry, I'll be shared the screen again. Okay, so besides, um, besides um, interrogate, besides having to see um, B lines in um, in the lung parenchyma, so you can also see consolidations. Right, so having to see consolidations. Um, as and what we call as uh, hepatization will give you different meanings, right? So it can be either collapse consolidation due to um, due to atelectasis or uh, fluid within the pleural cavity, or it can be due to um, pneumonia. So as what you can see here in the first clip, uh, this is what we call shred sign. So meaning there's um, evidence of consolidation below the uh, plural below below the plural, so this is actually the um, early signs of um, consolidation before it progresses to um, generalized uh, consolidation. So the second clip next to it will be um, hepatization. Right? It's a complete loss of aeration, and and this is what we call aesthetic echocardiogram. So when we see static echocardiogram, it means that um, the lungs uh, are collapsed uh, due to fluid uh, within the pleura or due to atelectasis or ERDS. And underneath it is um, dynamic echocardiogram. This is the typical finding for uh, bacterial pneumonia. So how do we assess, um, how do we make a quick assessment um, in patients who are acutely dysmic? So Lichtenstein um, came up with this um, 
algorithm in 2015, and this algorithm is called bedside lung ultrasound in emergency, which is blue protocol. So what what it does is um, it is a decision tree that does not aim at providing the diagnosis, uh, but it indicates a way for reaching 90.5% accuracy when using an ultrasound. ultrasound. So it helps a lot, especially in patients who are coming in the emergency department, um, and it will take, um, and, and, and there's gonna be an anticipation of delay in getting a chest X-ray. So this is what we do right, in order to um, to provide a quick and rapid um, rapid diagnosis and rapid treatment uh, to provide a better outcome for patients. So based on the study that has been conducted by the team, so it, um, what, it, what, what they did was they made a comparison. Uh, well, they did not make a comparison, but they, they looked at the, the diagnostic accuracy for all um, the, the findings that they, uh, they were able to get uh, from Blue Protocol. So for instance, in acute pulmonary edema, so the typical findings that they would see would be B-lines. Uh, based on Blue Protocol, when you see B-lines, right? So the diagnostic accuracy of diagnosing pulmonary edema will be as high as uh, with the sensitivity of 97% with specificity of 95%, which is very high. And as you can see for the rest of um, the lung pathologies, they presented with high uh, sensitive, sensitivity and high specificity. So this with early detection of lung pathologies prior to chest X-ray, an appropriate and rapid treatment can be given to patients and they will have a better outcome. So besides blue protocol, so he, uh, Likensin also uh, created um, another uh, a protocol using lung ultrasound, which is fluid administration limited. Sorry. Um, fluid administration limited by lung ultrasound, uh, false protocol. So it's a schematic uh, simplified decision tree. It is an approach to an acutely, uh, to an acute circulatory failure without strong diagnostic orientation. It provides strong therapeutic orientation. It does not, um, it does not um, give you, you, well, it does not um, help you in getting the diagnosis, but it provides a strong therapeutic approach. And it helps you in, in, in deciding what kind of treatment that the patient uh, should require. Um, it also suggests who should receive fluid, uh, who should receive fluids and when to discontinue fluids based on the pathology um, attained. Okay. So false protocol uh, endpoint will be uh, to discontinue to discontinue. Uh, fluid therapy. So what are the differences between lung ultrasound, chest x-ray, and um, lung auscultation? So based on this particular study, so they made a comparison between all three um, in, um, in acute respiratory distress syndrome. And what they found was um, lung ultrasound had high diagnostic uh, accuracy in detecting pleural effusion alveolar consolidation and alveolar interstitial syndrome and as compared to chest X-ray and auscultation, lung auscultation. And they also found that there's a high correlation um, between uh, CT scan and lung ultrasound as well. So as you can see here, the percentage of um, lung injury on CT um, correlated significantly with percentage of lung injury measured by lung ultrasound with a p-value of 0.003. So in conclusion to this um, study, so the routine use of lung ultrasound for critically ill patients with ERDS could reduce the indications of bedside chest, X-ray, and thoracic CT. So what about um, the use of lung ultrasound in detecting COVID-19 pneumonia or ERDS? So, um, the Society of Critical Care and Emergency 
um, sonography in Malaysia have they uh, we have created well, a guideline uh, for COVID nineteen pneumonia using our ultrasound. So this guideline actually um, uh, looked at um, the degree of um, the, the, the degree of um, loss of aeration, and it uses the same principle as what I've mentioned earlier, um, based on the scores. So score one, score uh, score zero, score one, score two, and score three. And this scoring system will be quantified into a lung ultrasound score, as what you can see here. So what you can see here, so if you zoom it in. So um, this lung ultrasound score is a semi-quantitative score that measures lung aeration, loss caused by different pathological conditions. So the cumulative score corresponds to the sum of all 12 lung windows. So the total score will be 36. And it's actually a good predictor for death, IC emission, and endotactal intubation. So you'll be the so this course will be divided into um, different severities, uh, different levels of severities. As you what you can see here, um, for normal, um, normal severity, the score will be zero. Mild severity will be between one to seven. Moderate will be between eight to eighteen, and severe will be between nineteen to thirty-six. So the higher the score is, um, the higher the, um, the rate of death, the higher the, the, the rate of IC emission, and the higher the rate of endotracheal intubation. So, um, so this study was conducted by um, our fellow physicians from um, China. So they made a comparison between uh, chest X-ray, uh, between CT thorax and lung ultrasound in COVID-19 patients. So based on the study, um, lung ultrasound score, a lung ultrasound score was actually better uh, than uh, RT-PCR for detecting CT abnormalities. And lung ultrasound score also um, has high diagnostic accuracy in identifying um, COVID-19 ARDS phenotype 2, which is the um, H phenotype. And the kind of value for lung ultrasound score based on their study was 9.5%, if not 9.5, uh, with a sensitivity of 100% and specificity of 77.2%. So with an abnormal CT, um, they, they managed to find that, that the abnormal CT were correctly diagnosed with lung ultrasound, so with an odd ratio of 13.3, even of less than 0 0.001, with a sensitivity of 100%, specifically 6%. He concluded that lung ultrasound um, for the two years of He concluded that um, lung ultrasound had accuracy similar to that of um, CT scan in detecting lung abnormality in pneumonia. So in this pandemic, so as the short shortage of resources constitutes, constitutes an undeniable public health threat, now to some can play a strategic role that has the potential to affect the management of these patients. So another another physician from from China, the the um, so they made. Um, a study to, uh, that uses lung ultrasound score in establishing uh, the timing for intubation uh, for COVID-19 patients based on this study. So even on the first day, within the 20, within 24 hours, for those who were intubated, they had a lung ultrasound score of um, 12. And when they monitored these patients, those who were, those who were intubated for the next seven days, so they found out that um, majority of them have more than 12 now within um, seven days of intubation. So they considered that the obvious difference indicates that the lung ultrasound may be a more accurate indicator of ideal intubation as compared to intubation index and respiratory rate. So, Besides using oxygenation index, for instance, your PFA show your, your partial pressure of oxygen and your respiratory rate, 
So these people, they use lung oxygen to decide when, when they should intubate COVID-19 patients. So lung oxygen, lung oxygen score of 12 may be a warning for intubation or sexation in critically ill COVID-19 patients. So with that, lung oxygen is an ideal inspection method in addition to the gold standard CT examination and may be one of the most effective tools during intubation time. So a follow-up to that um, study, so um, our fellow colleagues from, from Italy, so they made um, well, they made a study and between whether lung of some score predicts outcomes in COVID-19 patients be emitted in the department. So, so this patient, um, so this study, they, they looked at um, a few um, outcomes. So their primary outcomes were um, whether patients coming in into came coming into the emergency department, um, they would succumb. And what were the lung of some score at the, um, when they came in to the emergency room, and how many patients were alive and discharged? Uh, secondary outcome would be um, how many of them were intubated or not intubated, and how many of them were intubated or admitted into ICU. So based on and based on this study, um, major uh, those who were deceased. Had a lung ultrasound score about 21.6 plus minus 4.9. And those who were admitted um, to the ICU, the mean lung ultrasound score of 30 plus minus 5.9, which is very high. Okay. And then they looked at the uh, accuracy of a lung ultrasound in patients who were deceased, intubated, and admitted into the ICU. So for those who were deceased, um, lung ultrasound cut off of more than 26, specificity of 23%, and specificity of 90%. Right? And for those who were intubated, um, they had a lung ultrasound score of more than 25, with sensitivity of 27 and specificity of 3%. And for those who were admitted, And for those who were admitted to the ICU, they had a lung ultrasound um, score cut off of more than 25 as well, uh, with a sensitivity of 22% and specificity of 93%. And when they compared lung ultrasound to um, CT scan, so this mean, um, so they managed to find, they managed to find that um, patients a mean lung ultrasound score of 15 plus minus 6.7 um, had um, lung had less than 50% lung involvement on CT scan, whereas um, patients with mean lung ultrasound score of 21 plus minus 6 um, had um, more than 50% lung involvement seen in uh, CT. So with this, they concluded that um, lung ultrasound was a good predictor of death, ICU admission, and endotracheal intubations in patients with COVID-19 admitted in the emergency department. So, so when, when someone with high lung ultrasound scores that we see in the emergency department, then this would be um, the predictors that we are going to, to use in order to see whether the patient requires intubation, when the, when the patient requires intubation or not, and whether they would um, have a better outcome later on. And this will dictate on um, how aggressive our man management is going to be in the emergency department and will follow through to the ICU and so and so forth. So this is um, three our um, local study. So this study was actually um, conducted um, in 2020, and um, it, it is a study of lung ultrasound for COVID-19 patients in out of hospital setting. So in this study, so in this study, so um, the the study was done on two patients um, that uh, would that were triage um, in out of hospital setting, 
And this is what um, this is what we then and this is what we did during mass triaging. Right. So um, based on this study, um, a lot of patients had um, lung ultrasound findings. Um, but when this lung, when when these patients lung ultrasound findings were compared to chest X-ray when they were admitted um, to the hospital. Hmm? So um, um, what what they saw was there's no agreement um, between uh, lung ultrasound and chest X-ray detected by detected uh, in COVID-19 patients uh, with COVID-19 pneumonia. So so this study um, so it, uh, so um, <clears throat> so the conclusion of this study was the diagnostic imaging of COVID-19 staging using lung ultrasound in part of hospital setting showed better detection of lung pleural disease more often than chest X-ray for stage three COVID-19 patients. So what about uh, the use of lung ultrasound in critically ill patients? Right? So for instance, in pulmonary edema, so it is a frequent disorder in critically ill patients and a well-characterized hallmark of ARDS. And it is being treated by fluid overload and increase in pulmonary capillary permeability and also congestive heart failure. So um, how do we um, quantify the amount of fluids um, that is present inside the lung parenchyme? This is what we call the extravascular lung water. It is an objectifiable result of increased hydrostatic pressure and capillary permeability. So the index of extravascular lung water index is well correlated to oxygen parameters which is your PF ratio and oxygen and oxygenation index, the respiratory compliance and mortality in patients with ARDS. So this is um, the example of chest X-ray and CT that, that is typically um, found in patients with a high extravascular water index in patients with uh, ARDS. So this is a study that was conducted um, quite recently um, to see whether there's correlation between lung ultrasound and extravascular lung water index. And what they um, did was they looked at the amount of B lines in uh, different sectors. Um, so, uh, they, uh, so there were two um, protocols. The first one was 28 uh, sector protocol. This is uh, quite a lot, actually. And the second one was um, four sector protocol. This is um, this is actually what has been performed in the previous years. So they want to make they want to make a comparison. They made a comparison between twenty eight to uh, four sector protocol, and from from um, from this study, so they also made a comparison um, between in all in both um, protocols to the extravascular mortality index and also the pulmonary vascular permeability index. And these are the normal, um, normal ranges for extravascular water index and also for the pulmonary vascular permeability index. So what you can see in this table, so for those with extravascular water index of more than 10 and more than 15, which um, indicates lung edema and severe um, lung edema. So for those with um, for those who are in 28 sector B lines protocol, so they have high sensitivity and specificity in detecting um, severe edema. And for four sector um, B lines protocol, so the sensitivity and specificity are also high. Yeah. So when they interrogated the uh, pulmonary vascular permeability index, yeah, they would, both 28 and 4 sector B lines protocol have high um, sensitivity and specificity as well. They also made a correlation between 4 uh, sector B lines with various respiratory and hemodynamic parameters. And as what you can see here, they have high correlation uh, with um, PF ratio, oxygenation index, and also the, um, the dynamic compliance of um, the lungs. So they made a conclusion saying that uh, estimation of lung water and identification of pulmonary edema 
the B9 is a promising non-invasive tool. So um, B9 um, scored from 28 sector B9 protocol reveal high correlation uh, with extra vascular water index, but the only problem would be it's very cumbersome and time consuming as compared to simplified for sector B lines. So um, if um, so in, in a clinical setting, so 28 sector protocol would be very cumbersome and very time consuming. So if we were to perform four sector, that would be enough because uh, from four sector protocol, um, it also provides high sensitivity and specificity in uh, detecting severe lung edema and also severe increased vascular permeability. And now ultrasound also helps in identification of ARDS morphology. As we all know, ARDS has, um, can be either focal or non-focal. So, so having to differentiate between focal and non-focal, it helps in, in, in the, it helps in, in identifying um, the appropriate ventilator strategy and also the risk of hyperinflation. So what does, what does it actually mean by focal? It means that um, only certain parts of, of the lungs will be um, affected, whereas diffuse or non-focal, the entire lungs, the entire lung field will be affected by ERDS. And focal can be uh, divided into ventral, intermediate, and also dorsal, meaning in the front, in the center, and also at the back. So this study um, helps in, in identifying and predicting the RDS morphologies. Right? So based on this study, it says that lung ultrasound ventral, which is at the, um, the anterior part of the lungs, when uh, one lung ultrasound score more than three is being detected at the uh, anterior part of the chest, it helps to confirm, um, and it helps to confirm um, to, to be highly predictive of non-focal ARDS morphologies. So if you see um, a lot of B lines at the anterior part of the chest, which is more than three, it means that patient has non-focal or diffuse ARDS morphology with the sensitivity, sensitivity of 94 and specificity of 100%. So with this, lung ultrasound was a reliable bedside tool, and it is able to distinguish between focal and non-focal morphologies. What about lung, lung ultrasound variation score? So lung ultrasound variation score is used to accurately quantify PEEP-induced lung recruitment and regional analysis of recruitment mechanisms, or meaning prone positioning-induced lung recruitment. It, used, it is used in ERDS and carogenic pulmonary edema. So the entire lung is examined. Um, the entire lung is examined as what I mentioned earlier on using the 12 lung window um, exploration method and variation of consolidation, consolidation as well as interstitial alveolar edema is taken into consideration. The score of variation is based on the worst ultrasound pattern. Um, it is accurate. Uh, it is accurate for determining uh, treatment induced changes in lung variation. What it does is it actually um, looked at the resolution of um, B lines. If the B lines resolves, it means that um, the aeration status of the lung has improved. Right? And, and um, when the lung aeration improves, and, and when the lung aeration improves, it will be given a score. Right? So this is an example of the usage of lung aeration score. If you can, uh, so what you can see here in A, patient A, it is uh, from a, the same patient. So um, before, before lung recruitment is uh, administered to this patient, the patient had a lung ultrasound score of 21. So, so after performing lung recruitment, as you can see here, the lung ultrasound score has improved from 21 to 12. So it means that lung ultrasound is very beneficial in terms of um, determining whether the patient has improved or not. Besides um, lung re-addition score, PIP titration can also be used. Uh, lung ultrasound can also be used in order to titrate um, PIP. So 
um, this is the study that has been conducted um, in ARDS patients who underwent um, a lung recruitment. Uh, so what they did was they made a comparison between uh, lung ultrasound and also the PV curve as what you can see in, um, in the ventilator. So based on this study, they noted that uh, PIP induced lung recruitment of more than 600 mils are being detected by lung re score more than positive A. Um, and lung re addition score of more than four uh, equals to PIP induced lung recruitment between 75 to 450 mils. And they also managed to get to, to see a good correlation between uh, lung re score and PIP induced increase in PO2. So they made a conclusion that that's an sum is equivalent to um, PV curve method for quantitative assessment of PIP induced lung recruitment. But the only problem would be yes, they, they, um, it's, they can use it to, to titrate the PIP, um, but they are not able to accurately assess uh, PIP induced lung hyperinflation. So this is another way of, of, um, of titrating the PIP by using lung ultrasound in ARDS patients. So first is by determining whether the patient has focal or, to, or, or diffuse um, ARDS. Because for those with um, focal ARDS, meaning that there's absence of B, absence of B lines over the anterior part of the chest. So by increasing the PIM more than 10, there will be high, a higher risk of over distension. Right? So in patients with um, diffuse B lines, okay, so trial of PIM is being, uh, 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 the use of ultrasound is, uh, the use of ultrasound um, is used for to titrate, to guide, um, in PIP titration. At each increase in PIP, the responsiveness is monitored by lung ultrasound of um, anterior zones. So PIP um, increment by three to four centimeter water until anterior zones with moderate or severe loss operations becomes normal, meaning that so when there's, you know, when there's um, B lines initially before, before PIP is administered, when when um, all those B lines disappear and uh, lung ultrasound becomes A lines, it means that um, patient is highly responsive to PIP. Increasing PIP further theoretically exposes to over distension when anterior zones are already recruited. So when there's disappearance of B lines over the anterior part of the chest, and if you were to increase PIP even further, this will lead to over distension and this will lead to um, ventilator induced lung injury. So what about prone position in response assessment? So um, Brett et al. found that a normal lung ultrasound pattern of both enterobasal lung fields had marked improvement in um, oxygen in um, in PA2. Yeah, yeah, Mm. Okay, can you please unmute yourself? Can you please mute yourself? Okay, yeah, can you please mute yourself? Oh, 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 Okay, sorry about that. Sorry, sorry for interruption. I'm almost done with my presentation. So yeah, um, so what the so um so this study actually uses lung ultrasound to see whether the whether patients who are prone they are uh, whether they are responders or not to prone positioning. So with patients with normal lung ultrasound after uh, two hours after um after prone positioning, so they are, are reckoned as uh, early responders. So they had a sensitivity of 58 and specificity of 100%. So uh, for those who are late responders, meaning that uh, after two hours of being supine and after 12 hours, a total of uh, prone positioning. So their sensitivity of um, <clears throat> sensitivity, uh, sensitivity is 54% and specificity of 100%. Right. So they found that when patients who are prone, when they had a normal lung ultrasound, 
um, both and, and through basal lung fields. Okay? And two hours after PT, so they will have an improvement of oxygen and TF issue. And for early responders and for early responders, two hours after supine and 12 hours after total of tone positioning. So with a normal lung ultrasound pattern on both anterobasal position, in supine position after tone positioning is useful in predicting an early or late oxygen improvement in tone positioning. So as a take-home message, early detection of lung pathology in acutely dyspneic patients lead to early treatment and also a better outcome. So lung ultrasound gives you an accurate answer to diagnostic dilemma at bedside without having, uh, uh, without delay. And it also provides clues to safe and timely treatment without an unnecessary radiation risk to patients. Thank you. So I open, um, I open the chat box for questions. Are there any questions from the floor? Okay, if there's no questions, um, well, you can, um, you can, um, well, send your questions. Uh, personally to me to my email, then I will try to answer as um, as accurate as possible. Um, with that, um, thank you everyone for attending VCME and thank you the um, organizer as well. Assalamualaikum. <laughs>